Hello DS106, my name is Andy Rush. I am the new media specialist at the University of Mary Washington. As Tim Groom said yesterday, I'm not feeling all that well, so I'm going to try to get through this as best I can. Um, I'm not quite feeling my normal self, so, so bear with me. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about the tools and the, the techniques with, with video so that, that will help you with your assignments today. But first, I want to get a couple of things off my chest. And I need to say something first about Dr. Oblivion and this, and this backstory, if you will, for DS-106. Um, and that's what it is. It's a story. It's a badly acted, not even off-Broadway, it's, it's off-Caroline Street play. But let's call it what it really is. It's a distraction. It's, it's senseless. This is a computer science class. If you're not going to stick with one instructor, go teach it yourself. Go teach yourself by getting the stuff on the web. You've got Jim Groom, wherever he is, running around screaming, denouement, denouement. He's cringing while he's doing his video yesterday with a power saw in the background. He's pretending to be at some rural cabin somewhere with his green screen background. We're in DuPont Hall. It's on the campus of Univers the University of Mary Washington. You may have heard of it. They're laying down new wood floor three doors down the hallway. That's why there's a power saw. Then there's Martha, good old Martha, talking like she's put out by having to back up Jim's class and taking up the slack for him. Martha, that's not acting. We do that all the time. We're constantly picking up the slack for Jim. You know, thank goodness that Tim has arrived. Tim Owens, our new instructional technology specialist. Or should I call him Timmy Boy? At least he hasn't been corrupted yet, and I'm very proud of that. I actually like how he's given it back to Martha the other day on his first day on the job. That was really cool. Now, I'm not sure, and, and by the way, I need to read these from, the, from my notes so that I make sure that I cover all this. Um, I'm not sure where you all come down on this whole DS-106 TV thing. Um, you all have been doing some great work, and I'm quite proud to see it. I'm a, I'm a behind-the-scenes guy. I'm the one that, that likes to stay out of this. I don't, I don't want to participate in this little drama, okay? But you've been do doing great work anyway. Okay, so there's, there really, as far as I'm concerned, there's no need for this narrative. I'm not going to get sucked into this. I'm really not. Okay, so that's, that's all I want to say about that. So anyway, let's talk about video and some of the tools and the techniques that you're going to be using um, to create some of the assignments that have been posted. Um, hopefully you've gotten the email. If you haven't, let us know. If you don't know where these assignments are, you should by now. But uh, we'll talk a little bit about what you need to do and some techniques for how to get this stuff done. Okay. So I want to just kind of introduce you to some uh, concepts. So again, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a traditional instructor. I'm going to give you some PowerPoint slides, and I, th I hope you're okay with that. So, Fast, Cheap, and Under Control. This is the name of the resource website that you're going to have access to. And the first thing I want to talk about is, is where to get and where to see video and some of the resources that you folks can use um, as you're looking for material to put together your assignments. Um, some of the great places that, that are kind of available to, to see this stuff. Sorry, sorry about that. I 
was kind of disoriented. I, again, I'm not really feeling all that well. So again, bear with me. Um, let's get back to these important PowerPoint slides that we need to talk about. So where do, you, do we, where do you get and where do you see video on the web? Well, first of all, we're, we're talking about YouTube. Um, YouTube is, is that ever uh, ubiquitous website that has all kinds of different styles and um, types of video that you can either use music or actual footage or both. Um, Vimeo is kind of the, uh, the, the boutique site, if you will, for, for um, video hosting. Um, it's one that the New Media Center site that I have uses to uh, put up screencasts. It does a really good job with, with screen captures and that sort of thing, um, but also just general high quality video. Vimeo is kind of a, uh, a better way to go for that sort of thing. Then there's the Internet Archive, which has all kinds of archival footage. Um, if you remember those old kind of educational films like Drop and Cover, you can see that kind of stuff on the Internet Archive site. Okay, so how do you get this video? Um, well, what you're going to use is some type of YouTube downloader. Um, the browser that I use is called Firefox, which you probably have heard of, and it gives you the ability to download video as long as it recognizes uh, that video in the uh, website. So let me kind of show you this example. I'm going to bring up the, the screen with a video page. Okay. So here's a typical YouTube page. And if you have this program called uh, Video Download Helper, it's a plug-in for Firefox, you'll notice that there is a little kind of three-colored, you know, blue, yellow, red icon and I can zoom in here just so you folks can see this a little bit better. Okay, so right up next to the title, you might see this little icon here that talks about, or that, that is this little 3D icon. If you click down on that, you'll be able to download that current video. There's also one up towards the top as well that kind of is spinning, and so that'll let you know that you've got a video waiting for you to download. So if you click this drop-down arrow here, you'll actually see the different videos that are available. So I can select whichever one I want from this list here. Um, and generally, I want to probably choose like the 720p to give me the highest quality version. So I'm just going to select that here, click the download button, and then it'll ask me for a place to put this. And I'll just put it on my desktop and click on save. All right. So in the background, this video is actually saving. You'll notice uh, maybe down here at the bottom of the screen um, that slowly we're saving this video to our hard drive. And then I can use that video later on. Okay, so that's one of the techniques that I want to talk to you about is how to get some of these videos. Well, um, this video download helper is one way to do that. There's another program called Fastest Download Helper. Okay. Um, and there's also another way, in some cases, you can just simply right-click on the video links to download those videos that way. Um, but Fastest YouTube Downloader is another one you can search for that actually is a standalone program for the Mac and the PC that allows you to go to, a web, to, go to YouTube and, and paste the link in, and then you'll get that video. It used to work, just like its name said, really fast, um, but right now it, it doesn't actually always work so fast. So just something to, to be aware of. What this gets at is, is the idea. What, what you're watching right now is actually streaming video. There, there is no kind of uh, way to, to capture this video um, directly. You're not, you're not uh, getting something directly downloadable to your computer. You're actually seeing the stream, and it's kind of passing by you, and there's, there's no way to kind of capture it. What a progressive download is, and a good example is when this video, when this show is over, you'll actually have the archive video on the Justin TV website, you'll be able to download that. And when you see, when you first see a video come up in YouTube, for example, you'll see the red bar going across. That is the progressive download. That's the idea behind this. You're actually downloading the file to your computer. You just have to find a way to find that file so that you can use it later. These download helper programs are the ones that are going to be able to allow you to further edit those material. Okay. The other concept that we want to get at today is, is codecs. Um, so what the heck is a codec? Well, it's a compressor decompressor. That's where the name comes from. The idea is that you need to compress this video to a smaller file size um, and a more manageable style so that you can broadcast this stuff on the web, so you can play videos on the web. 
Um, you also want it to, on the other end, decompress that so that you can watch it, okay, so you can do something with it. Otherwise, you've got these very large pictures, essentially, and that's what video is, is a series of pictures being displayed at 30 frames per second. So if those pictures are really big, um, it's going to take a really long time for those to either display or it's going to take up a lot of your processing power in your computer. So we need to compress them a little bit so that they're a little bit more manageable. Okay? Um, so it's either, it either stands for compressor, decompressor. Um, you could also think of it as encoding and decoding, and the CO and the DEC are in there as well. So you're encoding it in a, in a particular format, and you're decoding it when you want to actually view the file. Okay? It's what makes each frame of video take up less hard, sp hard drive space. Okay? So compression, if you, if you hear the term compression, you're also talking about encoding. Okay, you're, you're taking the file and you're squeezing it. You're making it smaller. Hopefully, you're keeping the, the quality that's there, um, but you're actually making this file smaller. It's more manageable. Okay? You encode using a specific codec. Um, some of the codecs that are, that are out there we'll talk about in a second, but um, the example that we showed you were, was like um, the, the, uh, one of the QuickTime codecs, which is H.264, or, or a codec that QuickTime uses, H.264. That's what the, the video that we were downloading from YouTube is uh, in the, the codec that it's in. So video services generally are going to use multiple codecs, um, flash video, and MP MPEG-4, and again, there's a couple of different flavors of MPEG-4. The most recent and the most kind of quality uh, version is H.264, also known as AVC. Okay. Um, let me switch back to our computer again, and I'll just I'll show you a little bit about about our codec. So, let's go back to our our pages here, and I'm a, I'm going to bring up a program um, called Video Spec. And again, if any of the programs that I mentioned today, they're going to be available on the resource page. So um, what VideoSpec does is it kind of um, tells you a little bit about the, the file that you're using. And this will be handy if you're trying to convert it from one format to another. Um, sometimes you, you won't know what format it is, um, and you'll need to figure out which program is best um, going to handle it. Um, some cases, um, like Windows Media Player, won't play a certain QuickTime version or won't play a, a kind of strange format. A, a, rare format, if you will. So what you do with video spec is I've got my, my program here, and I'm going to take that file that I downloaded from YouTube and just simply drag it into the video spec interface. And it'll churn for a few seconds and then eventually come back and it'll tell us what format that video is in. Um, and it'll give us lots of, lots of good information. So again, let me just kind of zoom in here and, and show you what we've got. So we've got the name of our file. Um, it tells me um, also what, what format or what container style it uses. Um, and in this case, it's MP4 or MPEG4 in QuickTime. It tells us the file size, duration, bit rate. So the bit rate is actually pretty high. Here's the format that it's in, and this is, this is the codec information. So it's H.264 slash MPEG4 AVC. Those are all kind of synonyms for each other. Um, and it talks a little bit about the bit rate. The resolution is 1280 by 720, so that's known as 720p. Um, Display aspect ratio, we'll talk about those in a bit, and it's progressive um, in terms of its interlacing, and that'll, that'll mean something in, in just a second. But essentially, that's, that's what good digital video is, is progressive, uh, non-interlaced video. It also talks about the audio codex. Now, keep in mind that within a video, um, it's inside what we call a container or a wrapper there are other components inside that container. You've got a video component or a video codec, and you've got an audio codec. So the audio format in this case is AAC, um, and it's MPEG-4 audio. Okay? Um, t again, talks about the bit rate and that sort of thing. You can get more detailed information um, by going in and, and choosing the complete uh, view. And lots more information is available here. And, and one, of those, one of those parameters, so that you can compare the quality of video, and you want to do this on an apples to apples basis. You don't, you don't want to compare different resolutions of video, like 1280 by 720 and then um, 320 by 240. But this bits per pixel per frame, this will, gives, this will give you kind of a good indication of um, the ratio of, of what quality this is. So you can compare the quality of videos that you're, that you're looking at, um, which encoder does the best job. Okay. Maybe a little bit more detail than you want, but if you're really kind of into or get into video um, and want to see those details, these are some of the parameters that you'll be looking for. Okay. So let me close 
video spec and get back out of here. So essentially what we've downloaded um, is this, this, U, uh, this DuPont uh, video um, that is H.264 with an audio codec that goes along with it. So we've got that to use in a project. And this could be any video that you've downloaded from YouTube. Okay? In some cases, they might be in different formats. For example, this is an FLV file of a video that uh, my colleagues produced just the other day. Um, this actually is in a format FLV, and that is, that is the container format as well, okay, flash video. All right, so let me just close that, and I'll show you again. Let's bring up, now I close video spec. Let's bring it back up a second. Okay, so if we drag this video into video spec, this will give us the um, specifications of this particular file. All right, so here's the name. The container format is flash video. Um, it actually it has been encoded in the background, though, at H, in H.264. Okay, so an H.264 file isn't necessarily the same kind of across. That's the codec that's used, but it may be in different types of, of container forms. Okay. And the container is, is generally kind of indicated by the extension that you use. So AVI is a container format. MOV is a container format. Within those containers, you may have different codecs that are being used. Okay. We'll talk a little bit about VLC player in, in just a second. Okay. So back to our slides. I know you've been missing our slides, so we'll get back to them as soon as we can. So again, here's the containers. It's what video and audio codecs get wrapped in. All right. Um, so an example is AVI. It's a common Windows container file. But the video codec might be in a format called DivX. And then the audio might actually be the MP3 audio format. Um, so those are the codecs that are kind of wrapped in these containers. All right. um, a container is usually named for its extension. So FLV, AVI, MP4 or MPEG4, um, and MOV is an Okay, so here are a lot of the codecs that are available. Flash, there's, there's several ones that have been used for Flash. VP6 was one. On2 is the current one. Places like YouTube, Blip, Vimeo all use Flash codecs. Um, H.264 is also used on those sites. Um, H.264 is anything from small iPod video all the way up to Blu-ray discs. Um, MPEG-2 you may have heard of. Those are what's in DVDs. Um, they're also used in some satellite broadcasts. So MPEG-2 is the, is the format that's used. And MPEG-2 is actually also the, the codec that's, that's associated with that. Okay. Um, DV camcorders, you know, do you remember the old tape camcorders that, that are still available? Um, you, a DV is, a, is an actual codec that gets used. And so you would transfer those tapes onto a computer um, by using some sort of capture program like iMovie or Windows Movie Maker to capture that video in a digital form. You're just kind of transferring that data to your computer, but DV is the, is the format of the codec. And then MPEG-4, there's lots of different flavors of that. We mentioned H.264, but also DivX, XVID, or other variations of that. Okay, and there's even more codecs. Um, WebM is a new one that Google is kind of open sourcing, known as VP8. That's a web uh, codec that's, that's available, kind of like Flash, but it's Google's own kind of open source codec to use for web video. There's also Windows Media, those WMV files. Um, DRAC is one that's uh, promoted by the BBC in terms of their broadcasting and, and their, um, their video works. And there's hundreds more. Okay. When we talk about players that play uh, these different uh, files, people are familiar with their own computers, whether they're Macs or PCs. So if you're a Mac user, you use QuickTime. If you're a PC user, you, you have Windows Media Player. Um, if you want to be able to play all the video that exists out there, um, you want to do away with the, those programs, or at least not use them as much, and use a program called VLC. Um, if you go to vi videoland.org or just do a search for VLC player, um, you'll go to the place where you can download this. Um, VLC is a, is a great program that has a lot of capabilities. Um, does multiple things. It's kind of a Swiss Army knife in terms of it, it not only does it play, but it will actually do encoding. Um, it'll also play DVDs. And I'll show you another trick later where we'll actually take a little piece of a DVD out and save it out as a video file. So 
Videoland.org is the place to go to get this, and that's really all you need to know about, about VLC. Okay. Um, just checking my notes here. I want to make sure that I'm covering the stuff that I need to. Um, okay. I want to just briefly talk about a few aspects of, of video when it comes to uh, when it comes to things to look out for. One of those things is is a thing called interlacing and and. If, if you can see it on the video, it may be kind of hard to see, and, and I can have these slides available later on. Um, but there's just kind of this combing, this kind of zipper effect that you'll see on, on edges of, of clothing um, that you see on the left-hand side in this picture. On the right-hand side is the deinterlace version. So when you're encoding your material, you generally want to use a deinterlacer or find the deinterlacer setting um, to get rid of that. Okay, it's one of my, my kind of pet peeves for, for the quality of video that's out there. Um, the other thing is, is dealing with aspect ratios. There's generally two common ratios. Four by three is the old kind of standard television, standard def television, um, and then 16 by nine is the high def television. Now, it can be, uh, video can be in 16 by nine, um, what, we, what we call widescreen, but it may not necessarily be in high def. So that's another thing to keep in mind is that if you see something that's widescreen, it may not be in, in high def. That doesn't necessarily mean the same thing. Um, but those are the two aspect ratios that are out there. And here's a, an example, a couple of pictures. The one on the left is a four by three uh, video still. The one on the right is a 16 by nine video still and you can see the different ratios that are there. If you try to use these in, in different uh, ways, if you try to use one and, 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 and incorporate it into a four by three project or vice versa, um, you'll get things that look like this. Here's a 16 by nine video that's, that's used in a, um, a four by three aspect ratio. And then if you try to use four by three and a 16 by nine, you get this kind of stretched effect. You get the skinny on the left, you get the, the, the fatty on the right. So you wanna kind of keep that stuff uh, <clears throat> excuse me. You want to keep keep that stuff. Excuse me. Um, you want to kind of keep that stuff from happening. So, um, basically, what we're looking at is uh, these aspect ratio. Sorry, I told you I'm not really feeling myself. So let's get get back to our slides. All right. So that's, that's aspect ratios. Um, the tools, let's get back to the tools. Um, so VLC is a, is a really uh, great tool to play video. Um, it, it also is used in concert with a program called Handbrake to do what are called DVD rips. Um, and these, the, these DVD rips are essentially taking the content of DVDs and, and creating a single file that you can put on your hard drive that you can use in your video editing programs. So if you have VLC installed and then you use the Handbrake program, you can actually convert those files um, and use them um, to edit with and that sort of thing to, to further kind of edit the video, the content that you've got. So let me show you a little bit of, about how that works. We'll switch back to our computer interface here. And I've got VLC open right now. And what I'm gonna do is go to the file menu and choose open disk. I've got a disk inside my computer. So I'll choose open here. And it's gonna start the disk that I have in my drive. You can probably see what video it is. All right, so it starts playing the DVD. All right, I'm going to play the movie. Actually, let me, let me go to scene selection. Just kind of, I'll get to a specific spot. All right, so we'll pick, we'll pick this one here and start the video from here. All right, so I'm playing this, this DVD within uh, VLC. And let me just kind of zoom in here so you get a little bit bigger picture. All right. If I want to take a clip, let's say I like this, this scene here, I want to uh, grab a clip of this. I'm going to hold down the Shift, Command, and R keys. And this is on the Mac version. On the PC version, there is an actual button that you hit to record. And you have to get to it a certain way to, to reveal the extra settings. But you can record in both the Mac and PC version. But I'm going to hit Shift, Command, R, and you'll see the recording uh, caption okay, pop up on the video screen. So right now I'm actually that, recording right part of this DVD to my hard did. drive. I'm going to do the same oh, command again, Shift-Command-R, and it tells me that the recording is done. 
get pancakes. Right. So I can actually go and I can close this window out. And let me just zoom back out so you can see the full screen. If I go to my movies folder now, there actually is a recording that was made, and that's here's the file right here at the very top. Okay, it's a 10 and a half megabyte file recorded today at 2.01 p.m. So if I double click on this or I open this in VLC, okay, here's the file that I recorded. All right, it's still in an MPEG, actually MPEG-2 format, because um, that's what was recorded, that's the format that the DVD is in. So I've got this file that's recorded in MPEG-2 format, and I can use that scene in my storytelling, okay? So again, let's go back to our uh, video spec program and just really kind of quickly show you what this file is all about. Okay, so I'll grab this file that I just, just recorded, bring it into video spec. Okay, so this is an MPEG program stream. All right, the format is MPEG-2 video, so this is the codec that it uses. And then the, for the audio codec, it, it shows this thing. This is actually what's, what's known as Dolby, Dolby Surround, okay? So just to kind of prove the format that it's in. Now what we, what we want to do is take this file and we want to convert it into something that we can use, like an MPEG-4, so we can use it in iMovie or, or Movie Maker. So we'll start the program called Handbrake. And again, all these, all these programs, the resources for them are available um, on the, the resource page that I'll have available for you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just click the source button and find that movie. That's the first one that's listed here. <clears throat> it'll scan it really quickly and it'll allow me to convert this file into a format um, that we can use in something, again, like iMovie. Um, so you'll notice that it actually is going to save this as a M4V file, that is a container format that the iTunes will actually recognize. You'll notice on the, on the right-hand side here, there's a bunch of presets. Um, I usually use this regular normal profile. Um, in some cases, you want to use high profile if you're doing um, more advanced stuff. Or if you've got other devices that you want to use, like iPods or iPhones, you can use those settings as well. Sometimes I'll use Apple TV for the Apple TV uh, files and that sort of thing. But this normal profile will be fine. If I, uh, if I have it available here, I can just uh, add it to my queue. And then if I've got a bunch of files that I'm going to convert to MPEG-4, and th again, this is what's, this file is going to be converted into MPEG-4 in the H.264 codec. Notice this X.264. There actually is a open source version of H.264 that you can encode with. It creates a standard H.264 file, but it's, it's known as X.264. It does a really good job, and it's why Handbrake is such a popular program. So I've got my file ready to uh, encode. It's going to save it to the desktop as this file. So I'll just simply click the Start button. You'll see at the bottom it's going to encode. It'll tell you kind of where it is. Um, this, this short little file that I created won't take very long. Um, if you've got an hour-long video file that you need to convert, plan on it taking about an hour or so to convert, um, depending on the age of your machine. If it's faster or slower, it might be quicker than an hour. It might be quicker than real time. Um, it might be slower than real time. So just keep that in mind that in some of these cases, encoding files takes a long time. All right. So let me close Handbrake out. And you'll see on the desktop there's a new file, VLC stuff 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 dot m4v. And if I open this up with something like QuickTime Player, you'll notice that we have a really nice high quality file that can play. Oh come on, man! I think you actually can hear the audio. Okay, here's an idea. Should be able to hear Stop the outside of Brainerd, and then we'll place there we can get laid. What do you think? I'm fucking hungry okay. now, you know. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of converting one file to another. That's how you would grab material from, a, from an existing DVD um, and then use it in something like iMovie. Okay? Um, I'm trying to kind of monitor if there's any questions out there. And my, maybe my colleagues can 
help me out with uh, answering some of the different questions. So if you've got questions, uh, feel free to put them in the chat and I'll try to answer them for you. <coughs> Excuse me again, I, like I say, I'm not really feeling myself today. Um, so let's get back to our slides. I think we've just got uh, either one more slide or just a few tools that we need to mention. Um, okay. um, other tools that we have uh, to use at, or, or that, we, that we recommend, one of them is called MPEG Stream Clip. Um, and think of MPEG Stream Clip as kind of a free version of, of the QuickTime Pro program. So if you don't want to spend the $29 for QuickTime Pro, um, you, can, you can use something like MPEG Stream Clip to do a lot of the, the editing that you want. So let me, let me kind of show you that program really quickly. Um, so I've got MPEG Stream Clip open already, and I can bring in any of these files. You just simply kind of drag it in. Actually, let me let me take uh, let me go back to that uh, flash video file that I had open before and drag that in. So let's say we've got a, a video file that's that's in a in a flash video container, and we want to convert this. We want to use this in in something like uh, iMovie. We need to convert it into something that we can use out outside of. Um, and this isn't necessarily a great example because it's already in the H.264 format. But just to show you what MPEG Stream Clip does, it can take something like a flash video, and if you go to the file menu and choose Export to, you can export it to QuickTime or MPEG4. Um, that will allow you to convert it into a format that you can load into something like iMovie. If you, if you try to upload, load a FLV file into iMovie, it's going to say, I can't do that because it doesn't recognize that particular format. All right? So MPEG Stream Clip is a, is a good kind of program to convert your files into a format that can be used elsewhere. Okay? It also can do basic editing. So as I, as I go across here, I can see kind of different spots of the video. So if I want to pick something out from, from the video, I put my uh, playhead in a particular spot, and I just simply hit the I key, and that will, I don't know if you noticed the change here, but actually highlighted everything before it and kind of uh, uh, lightened it here and darkened it on this side. Then I can take the cursor and move it forward a little bit, hit the O key, and that will give me a highlighted area of, of what I'm going to save when I export this file. So you actually can do kind of some basic trimming um, of clips and that sort of thing. So MPEG Stream Clip does a, a good job of, of really basic editing. Okay, So that's the MPEG Stream Clip tool. Now all these programs are based on, uh, not ex with the exception of Handbrake, um, MPEG Stream Clip, um, WinFF is a good program to do conversions on the PC. There's another program called FFmpegX that does a lot of different conversions. All these are based on the FFmpeg program, which actually is a command line program that exists um, out there for people to use. So they built these interfaces around this program to, to give you this conversion capability. And all that stuff kind of gets funneled ultimately into your iMovie or your Windows Movie Maker program. Okay. All of these resources are available at this website. It's video.umwblogs.org. So let's go there and show you what, what that looks like. And if we go to the main page, this is what you'll see, just kind of the about. What, how this is set up is along the, along the top, you've got the, cap or the, the ideas behind what video is. So you've got players, you've got shooting video, you've got capturing video, editing, and coding, and so forth. This last one where it says fast, cheap, and under control, <clears throat> this essentially is the resource page. Okay? So if you look, look here, kind of a little bit of an introduction um, uh, my contact information. One of the things to, to keep in mind as you're, as you're going forward with this um, is getting familiar with copyright and fair use because when you're using this material you're going to be running right up against in some cases copyright issues and what you can use fairly in your uh, assignments. Um, you can't blatantly steal stuff but education uh, you know students and, and faculty are able to use materials as long as they don't take large chunks of, of material they can use these materials and create something that's, that's new 
Um, it's what we call transformative and, and use that in, in projects without having to worry about copyright. Okay, so just a couple of links to kind of get you started. You should have all watched, if you haven't already watched, the Everything is a Remix um, video, especially part three. Um, don't forget, forget parts one and two. Um, but basically, they, they talk a little bit about how copyright has, um, has existed in the, in the history of, of film and that sort of thing, where it fits and how people essentially have been stealing for years. Um, so um, just kind of look at that, and, and it's a really kind of an eye-opening way to see that how, how things have been used over and over in, in films and kind of, um, you know, bettered and, and tinkered with and, and, and made uh, and led to innovations and that sort of thing. Um, Punchlines for Progress is, is a documentary that's available on the Vimeo website, but it's, it has a lot of the elements that we're talking about. So it's a good kind of video to watch to see how people used uh, copywritten material, um, used music uh, as a bed behind the video, kind of transformed different clips into uh, a narrative that, that tells a, a, a neat story. And I think this Punchline for Progress video is, is really quite good and, and, a, and a good one to watch and an entertaining one to watch. Um, especially even from a social aspect. Okay, um, as you as you scroll down here, you'll see a lot of the stuff that I've talked about. Um, if if you have trouble playing video on your machine, again, codecs are are likely the issue. So this talks a little bit about where to get some of these different codecs if you if you don't want to use VLC or in some cases VLC still doesn't play them. Um, so that stuff's available. I don't I won't show you all this. It's just a kind of a, a resource that I've been putting together as we went along. Um, hopefully it's, it's, it's helping you uh, or is going to help you kind of create your projects. Um, let's, let's talk real quickly about your projects just to kind of know where you are. Um, this is from a previous um, iteration of this class, but just kind of an idea of, of what we're talking about. Um, here's the, redubbing the audio is, is essentially taking a, a, a project um, and either completely changing the idea behind a scene in a video. Um, you'll see the description here, but, but for example, kind of taking Howard Beale, um, his, his uh, rampage on network, and changing it into a diatribe about being bored with school um, is an idea of, of redubbing the audio. Okay? Um, and you can read these, again, on, on your own, but if you don't like any of these, you can choose to have your own video adventure. So, um, but all of these will involve some sort of either kind of mashing up or redubbing audio and, and that sort of thing. So we're, we're going to talk about um, how to accomplish that. Okay. Now, there was a question about iPhone uploads in Vimeo. Um, and I'm not sure exactly what that was referring to. Um, is that they don't look good? Okay. So you've actually taken iPhone 4 videos and uploaded them to video and they, they just don't look good. Okay. Um, were they asking why is that, why, why is that occurring? Um, I wish I knew. Um, I, I think I've done it myself and they've looked okay, but um, it could be, sometimes it has to do with the idea that you're, you're taking a video that's, that's encoded in one Kodak in one particular setting. And if you make any changes in that video in terms of converting it to another format, you're recompressing it. And in some cases, that video won't, it'll, it'll do such a poor translation from one to the other because it's, it, it thinks it's working on a file in one way and it's not doing a good job. So it just, it, it may be just something that needs to be tweaked by Vimeo's site to improve the, the conversion from one format to another, or, for, or it's, it's not quite supported yet, or something along that line. So that's my best kind of uh, guess as to why that might be happening. Do you have other questions that are there? Or Again, it's kind of hard to follow along some of the different stuff going on in the background, but uh, I'll, I'll try to look and, and look at that as best as possible. Hopefully, I'm just kind of answering your questions as we go along. So. Um, Let's go to our computer screen here. I'm going to close out some of these other programs. Um, let me bring up this particular video. Okay, this may be a, a fan favorite, so. Oh, look. What a scary chipmunk. Okay. 
it's it's known as scary chipmunk. Um, if if any of you folks are uh, zoologists, you may actually recognize this as a prairie dog, um, but it is known as, as scary chipmunk. Um, and you might say, well, you know, how did this video come into existence, or <clears throat> what's behind making this video? I want to show you the source material, and this source material is also available on YouTube. Um, but it actually started out as a as a as a file called Horror Beaver, and this is the, the kind of full video. And it talks, it's kind of a Japanese TV program where they introduce this little guy and he comes in. So somebody had the great idea of um, taking a little spot, and this, here's the section right here that turned into scary chip. Okay. So you might say, well, how did they go about something like this? Well, um, let's show you how that's done. So here's our here's our file. It's horrorbeaver.mp4. What we're going to do is we're going to bring that into iMovie. Okay, I've, I've already actually cheated a little bit, so let me let me not cheat and get rid of this here, just so you see the whole process. So I'll go to, in from iMovie. I'll go File, Import, Movies. Okay, and we'll bring in that mp4 file and it'll it'll take just a couple of seconds to process it in, into a format that we can edit and so now it's part of our okay now it's part of our event library what we're going to do is just go in and kind of isolate that one section okay right about here we'll just drag this out and drag it back and then we'll just take that and we'll add it to our timeline so I'll, i'm going to hit the e key but i could drag it up there just as easily all right, so we've got our, our video now on the timeline. Now you might ask, well, there's all that text and other stuff going on around it. How do we, how do we kind of isolate that, that guy there and um, get rid of the text and the subtitles? Within iMovie, and, and again, I encourage you to use something like iMovie. Um, Windows Movie Maker does some basic editing, but iMovie has a, a, a few more capabilities. So if you know somebody who has a Mac or um, know where you can access a Macintosh with the iMovie program, it's, it actually is, is quite good. Um, what it has as part of its capabilities are uh, a cropping feature. So what I want to do is essentially just kind of isolate this area around the, the prairie dog's face. So I'm going to use the cropping tool. All right. So I'll click on the cropping tool right here. It looks like kind of two frames that are, that are crossed together. All right. And we'll click, click on the crop tool. And, on, and you'll notice that it kind of gives me a frame already. And what I want to do is just shrink that down so that none of the titles are in the picture. And I, I want to scroll to the end of this. Actually, I want to make sure that I choose the video because that will crop the timeline stuff. So let's, we'll reset that. Okay. All right, so now we'll go into the cropping tool. And we're just going to drag this down here, and then we'll drag it from the bottom up here. And we'll just kind of play that to see if it fits in. I don't have it quite right. Okay, so it might be just a little bit too tight. So let's move it down here and drag it out. Okay. So we almost got it. And we'll just bring this up a little bit. All right. We'll click done. Okay. So that's how they got the basic clip, but you but you may notice there's some audio that's associated with it. So we'll actually need to take this and, and, and get rid of the audio. So I'm going to right click on this clip and detach the audio. And after a couple of seconds, you'll see the audio file down here as a separate piece to the video. I'm going to get rid of that. And now I just have the video itself, so you won't hear any audio playing with the clip. Okay. And now we need to add some other components to it. So what you might do is go to the music section. And I've got a couple of uh, choices here. Um, I'm going to choose this sci-fi theremin file and just drag it up and put it on, put it, associate it with that file. And then it's, if we go back to the beginning, we can play it, and it should have some kind of creepy music that's associated with it. Okay. 
Did you hear the creepy music? Everybody give me a thumbs up or a yay if you, if you heard the creepy music associated with the, with the file. Okay. Um, in addition to that, what you may want to do is, is add some voiceover material to this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click this clip and choose the microphone. All right. And I'm just going to tap the computer. I'm using the, the computer's microphone, so it may not sound all that great when I actually um, make this recording. But um, you can do a, a voiceover associated with this clip um, on top of the music. So all I need to do is click the clip. It's getting ready. It's counting down. Ooh, look at that scary chipmunk. All right. And sound, now we will have this audio file associated with that along with the music. So if we play this Ooh, entire file. Look at that scary chipmunk. All right, so something along that line um, to create the scary chipmunk video. Um, and you'll be doing this kind of thing to uh, create your own projects. All right. Other questions out there? All right, I'm having one of those waves of not feeling so well right now, so bear with me a second. Um, okay, people are looking, I'm just looking at the chat right now as I, I'm really kind of feeling a bit woozy, but I'm going to try to see these if I can. Okay. Oh, and I do like the comment from uh, Bertha Burtis about News on the March. Um, you know, a great example of, of putting this stuff together and, and uh, you know, using it in, in your uh, material. So, um, like I say, I'm not really feeling all that well today. And, uh, but I wanted to give you these resources uh, before I... Uh, before I just wasn't feeling well at all and, and I actually feel like I need to go to bed and, and, and rest. But, uh, um, and again, I'm, I'm looking for some more questions about... Yeah, it is bizarre. I completely agree. All right, so let's... I'm going to try to do this and, and finish up. Let's, let's go back to our, uh, our computer and just kind of summarize what we have for our resources. Um, so fast, cheap, and under control. If you, if you scroll down and kind of look at everything here, we've, a lot of the stuff we talked about is, is available here. Um, tools that are available, Handbrake, MPEG Stream Clip are all available for download. Um, YouTube downloading, you can get the fastest YouTube downloader, try that out. Otherwise, the video download help helper program um, on for, the, for Firefox. Um, there's some other links that I've had up there. These programs may or may not work, but they've, they've worked in the past. Um, TubeChop is kind of interesting in that it, it allows you to take an existing clip um, from YouTube and kind of change the start and the end times. Um, when it comes to video editing, you, uh, there's a really good kind of Wikipedia chart that's available to show you what video editors are, are out there. Again, iMovie 11 is the latest iMovie and Windows Movie Maker, um, or Windows Live Movie Maker has some um, really kind of neat YouTube connections and that sort of thing for, um, for newer, newer PCs. And Video Spin is another PC editor out there that you might want to give a try to. Uh, if you want video analyzers, here's the f a few that exist. Video spec is really good on the Mac. Um, it also is available. Uh, media info is also available on the Mac, but it's a good PC program as well. Um, and you can even analyze multiple files and export and that sort of thing. Um, aspect ratio calculators are, are really good in the sense that you can, if you need to figure out uh, a video that needs to go in a certain space, um, you can use these to uh, get either a 4 by 3 ratio or a 16 by 9 ratio. Um, so for, as an example, if we're looking at something and you want it to fit in a 16 by 9 space, I've got a width of something like 640 and I want to figure out what the height needs to be of that video. 
Um, so something like 360 is, is, is the calculation that's there. So that'll be good for trying to fit videos into a web page, like in a blog page. Um, if you want to maximize the space that exists there, um, the aspect ratio calculator will help you kind of ch change the embed code settings for, um, for your video. All right. Um, DVD ripping programs. Again, we talked about and we showed what VLC can do, um, but uh, Mac DVD Ripper Pro, um, Mac the Ripper on the Mac, DVD Fab is a PC program that allows you to, to rip entire DVDs and then you can go and you can edit those yourselves. Um, lots of other information, some basic image editing programs, um, QuickTime extras and, and so forth. So hopefully this, this information is uh, going to be valuable to you. Um, please give me feedback as we go forward. Um, you know, this is, this is a kind of a, a, a love of mine in, in, in a way. I, I really enjoy kind of working with video and trying to figure out some of the, um, some of the ways that things work. Um, and it, it's the kind of thing that's, that's just so enjoyable that uh, I, I want to be here to, to help you out. And that's, you know, that's kind of the proper syntactical order of, of what video is and uh, where it fits in and I'm, I'm really I really feel like I'm kind of babbling on a little bit right now and I'm just not really feeling myself so I think we should probably call it uh, a, a day here uh, DS 106ers and, and I've uh, enjoyed speaking with you and being with you um, I hope to see you again in some form or fashion uh, out in the in the real world uh, Stop by and, and see me. I'm, I'm, I'm easily recognizable. Um, so uh, that's today's show. And if you have any questions, p feel free to email me. Um, I'm here for you. Thanks for watching.